So this is the second video in my app collection series, and this one is all about the pro apps for the iPad. My thanks to Setapp for sponsoring this video. Let's start with photo editing. Lightroom is the best photo editing app out there. Personally, I use it to edit all my photos. I feel I get the best results from Lightroom compared to any other app. While it's a bit more complex than apps like Darkroom or Pixelmator Photo, it gives me those results that I want. And at the end of the day, that's what matters when it comes to photo editing. Lightroom also gives me all the controls that I want over a photo. It has a ton of tools built into it. Recently, Adobe put in a bunch of templates, a bunch of presets that you can use to kind of start your edits. It'll give you a kind of a feel to your photos. There's cinematic ones. There's all sorts of different portraits for different skin tones and things like that. So these are really good. I, I, I really like these as kind of like a starting point. Uh, but then you can go to tweak them from there. They recently added a three-way color corrector. Now you've always been able to kind of adjust the hues of colors, but this way you can really color correct and color grade those photos, just like you would if it was editing video. But a couple of things I would like to see is better photos and files integration. The apps that I mentioned previously, Darkroom and Pixelmator Photo do a great job of hooking into both the Photos app and the Files app. Lightroom allows you to import from those, but it's a little more cumbersome than it should be. While Lightroom is my photo editing app of choice and I do feel it is the best photo editing app, I do have a couple of honorable mentions that might fit some other use cases that aren't mine. And they're apps I've already mentioned. So first up is Pixelmator Photo. Like I mentioned, you can import photos from files or the Photos app and you can bring them in and start manually tweaking them. But the secret sauce behind Pixelmator Photo is this ML button. Now, if you were to tap that, that stands for machine learning. It will use the machine learning, the, the computational cores of the iPad, that, that, that speed the iPad truly has, and completely edit the photo for you. It's kind of a really cool feature, especially if you're new to photo editing and you're not sure what all of these controls do. Now, while you can toggle this globally and have it auto edit all the settings for you, you can actually go in and do this one by one for each tool. This is really handy if you want to really understand what, you know, a, a three-way color selector does or, you know, adjusting the hue and saturation and how that will affect a photo. I think this is really important for people just starting off in photography. The other app I want to mention is Darkroom. Darkroom recently got updated with excellent shortcut support. This gives you the ability to actually mass edit photos using shortcuts. Again, this is just something that shows the power of the iPad off. How this works is you use the built-in filters in Darkroom. So while I wouldn't want to use this for professional photo shoots or even for photos that I'm like giving away or anything like that, if I just had a bunch of photos I needed to bust out really quickly, I knew which filter I wanted to use, I could just take a group of photos, run it through this shortcut, and boom, Bob's your uncle. You have a bunch of nicely edited photos. Affinity Photo is the Photoshop app for the iPad. It's hands down the most feature rich Photoshop image compositing app on the iPad. Now it's a, a bit complex. In fact, I still don't understand most of the tools in it and I've been using it since it launched. But there are some really great tutorials built right into the app that you can check out. I mostly use this for thumbnails where I'm adding gradients or text or things like that. Or maybe I just want to remove a few like bad objects. Maybe some dust was left on the table or something like that. And I just want to like take that out so I can kind of just get my thumbnail perfect. But it has support for a whole bunch of different tools, including adding a bunch of layers, artificial lighting, different brush types for using the Apple Pencil, blend modes, content removal, and just so much more. An honorable mention for this category is Photoshop. Now, Photoshop is on the iPad and it's a good app. It's not bad at all, but it's not one-to-one -one with the desktop. I would still say Affinity Photo has more features and is a better overall iPad app. But I also understand people have been using Photoshop for years and that's what they're used to. So if you have a background in Photoshop and you're coming to the iPad and wanting to do this stuff on the iPad now, 
Photoshop is there. Now, the difference uh, between Photoshop and Affinity Photo is Photoshop is a sub subscription app. Affinity Photo is just $20 one time. So yeah, I mean, if you're used to Photoshop, that's that's probably worth it to you. Like Lightroom, I'm used to Lightroom, so the subscription is worth it to me. But at the end of the day, if you've never used Photoshop before, Affinity Photo is probably the better route if you're planning on doing this stuff on the iPad. So we've been talking a lot about iPad apps, but what about its sibling platform, the Mac? Well, that's where today's sponsor comes in, Setapp. Setapp is a Mac subscription service that gives you access to over 200 apps. And this is full access, no extra add-ons. This includes apps like the excellent writing app Ulysses, the clipboard manager Paste, the AI-powered photo editor Luminar, and so many more. When signing up, you get seven days free, no credit card required. That's the best kind of free trial. So you can try out all of these apps and see if it's worth it to you. After that, it's just $9.99 a month. So if you use just a couple of these apps, that will cover the subscription cost for the service. And then you could just keep trying more apps on top of that. I highly recommend checking out Setapp. It has such a wide variety of apps so it can cover any of your needs. If you like automation, check out Better Touch Tool. If you want to remote control your Mac from your iPad, there's Jump Desktop, which by the way, has great trackpad support for the iPad Magic Keyboard. It's, it's perfect. It's what I used when I was in IT. And also there's MindNode, which is a great mind mapping app I covered in my iPad Starter Apps video. You can see a list of all the apps that are a part of Setapp on their website. I'll put a link to Setapp in the description below and my thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Let's shift to a different style of professional apps and that's development. Now there is a huge asterisk on this category. Apple does not allow apps that can compile code on the App Store. The reason behind this originally was because devices just weren't fast enough and they were worried about crashes and all sorts of things. Well, with the iPads where they are and even the iPhones, I don't think that's an issue anymore at all. So I personally feel this rule should really be rethought and apps should be allowed to compile code on the iPad and maybe even the iPhone. The first app in this category I wanna mention is Textastic. It's a plain text editor with support for a whole bunch of different languages when it comes to syntax highlighting. Now, I actually haven't used this app a whole lot in the six, seven months that I have uh, been a full-time YouTuber now, uh, but when I had a full-time job in IT, I used this app every single day. I was writing a lot of PowerShell scripts in it. Again, going back to that rule, you can't compile code. So what I was having to do to run these PowerShell scripts was remote into a server and then run them from there. It actually wasn't that big of a deal. I had the workflow just kind of down down, and it was kind of nice to be able to just write it on my iPad and then just switch over to another app and then run those scripts. The way I would sync all that stuff is through GitHub. And the app that I would use to do that is Working Copy. It's an excellent Git client. It's not just GitHub specific, but pretty much every Git flavor that I could think of is supported. In fact, my website is just a plain vanilla Git repository and I manage it all through Working Copy. Working Copy also has shortcut support. So the way I use this is actually kind of cool. So when I publish a video, I run a shortcut that gets the URL from the RSS feed. Every YouTube channel, believe it or not, actually has an RSS feed. So it'll get the URL of that video from the latest RSS feed. It'll also use regex to get the description of that video. So any links that I put in the description, so like this video, I'll put links to all these apps in the description below. Uh, it'll grab all of that stuff, format it into a nice blog post, and then use the working copy actions to publish it to my website. So I'm not having to sit there and manually type all this stuff out every single time. Technically, you can use working copy as a text editor if you just wanna write in working copy, like maybe if you just need to make a quick change to like a spelling or grammar mistake or something like that, you could totally do that. But what I was doing a lot is I would keep working copy and textastic and split view, and you can drag and drop from working copy into Textastic, open those files, make changes, and then push into working copy. It's, it's actually kind of a cool workflow. So if you're doing any sort of web development or anything that just kind of really relies on Git, you could totally do it right from your iPad. 
So an honorable mention for this category is Swift Playgrounds. Swift Playgrounds is a interesting app that's going to be getting a really cool update. You're gonna be able to write apps start to finish on your iPad using Swift and Swift UI. Now, unfortunately for developers that know Objective-C and C, you're not gonna be able to write apps in that. It's strictly limited to Swift and Swift UI. So if you're used to using Xcode on a Mac and something like that, I don't think this will replace that for you. But for new developers that are just getting into app development, that are just going to start off with Swift and Swift UI, this is kind of perfect for them, especially since they'll be able to run tests of their app right on the same device that they're using to write it. I think that's pretty cool. One pro app field I see a lot of people say the iPad is lacking in is video editing. Now, there isn't a ton of apps in this field that cover a wide variety, but there are a couple of really key apps that totally make video editing possible on the iPad. The first one, and probably the main one, is LumaFusion. It's hands down the best video editor on the iPad. It's a multi-track video editor that has support for up to six video tracks and six audio tracks. And honestly, I've never felt I needed to go beyond that. Uh, but if you do need more audio tracks, you can convert video tracks into audio tracks. There's support for features like keyframing, so you can animate text, images, video, uh, audio, so many different things that you could do with keyframing. It's it's kind of a an important piece to video editors. There's also support for changing the speed of clips and reversing it. So I film a lot of B-roll for this channel and I film that at 60 frames per second. And then I'll go in there and slow it down to 24 frames per second. So you get this really smooth video. And of course there's tons of effects like blurring, sharpening, uh, kind of wacky things you can do with images and stuff like that, and color grading support as well. You can also import LUTs also. One place where LumaFusion kind of falls down is easily animating text. Now you can absolutely animate text if you wanna sit there and manually do everything with keyframing and effects and stuff like that. Um, but there's not really any templates or anything that you can just like quickly manipulate if you wanna throw something together. That's where an app called Mojo comes in. Now this is totally meant for the Instagram story people, but you could tweak it to be defaulted to 16 by nine and totally work for traditional style videos. The way I use this though, aspect ratios don't really matter. So what I do is I start with a blank template and I'll set the background to black. I will go through their presets of animated text, find what I want, fill it all out, make sure it's just right, the duration's right, and then I'll export it to the Files app. Then I'll bring it into my LumaFusion project, put it wherever I want, and then I'll just change the blend mode, and I'll change it to lighter color so that the black background disappears and I'm just left with the animated text. If you're interested in this, Patrick Tommaso did an excellent tutorial on how this works in a lot more detail than what I can go into in this video, so I will link to his video in the description below. There are a ton of options for audio and music production on the iPad. In fact, this is something that's been really taking off lately. One of the apps that I use a ton is Ferrite. This is a spoken word audio recording and editing app. I use this to record all the technical voiceovers for my videos. So if something is really precise and I need to get step one, two through 20 correct, I'll write out the script and record it into Ferrite. But it's also a multi-track audio editor. So for podcasts that I've been working on lately, I will bring all these audio clips into Ferrite, then use the strip silence feature. So I'm just left with the clips where people are talking, and then I could bring all those clips closer together. This way it kind of makes it seem like a more natural conversation. A lot of times with podcasts, there's internet lag. So when you're done talking, there might be a pause in between the next person starting to talk. So you can bring those clips closer together in Ferrite to make everything seem more natural. There's a bunch of people that are making music just using an iPad, and I think this is really impressive. Now, I am not one of them because I have no musical talent whatsoever. And my family, my brother got all the musical talent. I, I just got all the good looks. But there's a YouTube channel I highly want to recommend. It's called Henny the Business, and he makes music from his iPad. In fact, it's music you've probably heard. He has some excellent videos about music production on the iPad, and I'm gonna link to his channel and those videos in the description below. 
when I was doing research for this category, everything was just going straight over my head. And I was just like, you know, I'd rather just recommend an expert, somebody that knows what they're talking about, instead of me just like guessing at it, because I, I don't want to steer you guys wrong. Vector apps are different from Photoshop apps. Typically, vector apps are creating something from nothing, whereas Photoshop apps, you're, you're manipulating a photo, maybe compositing a few images together, something like that. And drawing apps have been a staple for the iPad for a really long time, especially since we've gotten the Apple Pencil, which has really low latency for drawing on a tablet. Now, I'm not much of an artist, but I do have some apps I wanna recommend. But before I recommend those apps, I wanna recommend another YouTube channel, uh, Brad Cowboy. He does a lot of drawing on different tablets, but he also does a lot of stuff with the iPad. Uh, I highly recommend everyone go check out his channel. He does some great work just going into detail on a lot of different drawing apps, covering updates, what you can do with them and things like that. It's an excellent, excellent channel and I will link to it in the description below. The first app I wanna recommend is Affinity Designer. It's a vector and pixel drawing app that you can just do a whole bunch with. Uh, it has support for unlimited layers, blend modes and grids that snap along with a whole bunch of tools that I don't really understand what they do because again, I'm not an artist. But there's a ton you can do with this app that isn't just drawing and design work. Uh, for example, when I had a day job, I designed my resume through Affinity Designer. It was just a great way to kind of make a really nice looking resume that stood out that just wasn't like a pages template. I've also made some PDF documents through Affinity Designer that just needed to be fancy, that, that, that needed to look nice, that they just, again, didn't need to be pages templates. They, they needed to look kind of nice. So I made them through Affinity Designer. But if you do any design work, I highly recommend Affinity Designer. It's just a good app overall. For drawing apps, it's kind of a no brainer. I think Procreate is the most popular one for good reason. It's an amazing iPad app that has support for a ton of different brushes, a great color wheel, lots of layers. It's just a well put together app. It also has uh, options for smudge, effects, text, anything that you might wanna put on a drawing, it, it's there. You can export into a whole bunch of different formats as well. In fact, in the future, you're actually going to be able to paint 3D objects in Procreate, which is pretty cool. Procreate obviously works best with a stylus and the best stylus is the Apple Pencil. Like we don't even need to have that debate. You get the low latency, pressure sensitivity, all those different features. But then you could pair that Apple Pencil and Procreate with something like the Paperlike. Now, full disclosure, Paperlike is a sponsor of my channel, uh, but I do think it's kind of an interesting product to put with drawing apps and vector apps and things like that, where you're using the Apple Pencil on the screen. Paperlike is a textured screen protector, so when you're using the Apple Pencil, you get feedback. Like if you were using a pencil and paper, you, you get that kind of feedback, which is really nice when you're drawing and stuff like that. Um, if you wanna check out the Paperlike, I will put a link to that in the description below, along with everything else in this video. So the last app I wanna mention is Nomad Sculpt. Nomad Sculpt is an interesting app that I kind of found when I was doing research for this video. It is a 3D modeling application that you can create 3D objects in, paint and do all sorts of different things. I, I tried to make a face, it, 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 it didn't go so well. But again, I'm not an artist. Uh, so I went to their website to kind of check out some of the, like, the, the stuff that they've made through this app and it's so impressive. Like everyone, just even if you're not an artist, just go check out their website. It's so cool, some of the stuff that people have made in 3D objects on an iPad. I, I'm super impressed. So while I can't make 3D objects, I definitely wanted to make sure I included this app just because it looks super impressive. It looks like you can do a whole bunch of stuff with it. Uh, if you're curious about the specifics of this app, I, I honestly can't talk on 3D creation, but uh, check out their website. There's a lot of details there. So that's it. Those are the pro apps of the iPad. That was a lot. If you made it to the end, thank you so much. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you wanna see more iPad content, app recommendations, productivity, automation. That's what I cover here. Thank you all so much for watching and have a great day.